So in this video we're going to go through how to change the impeller on a Johnson 4.0 4 horsepower seahorse. This is the two stroke. This is the one with the neutral and forward. I believe the one with the reverse is a bit different. I'm not sure what's different. I know the parts are different. Um, but So this video is purely for the Johnson that has neutral and forward. So to start with, I've got some parts here. These are aftermarket parts. We've got the impeller and a wear plate. And we've got the engine on a suitable mount here. It's secured by the two clamps on the back. And what we're looking for is on the bottom here, we've got to lift the engine up. We've got a, a bolt at the front and at the back here. And we'll just take those two out and we should be able to lower the um, the lower unit down from the engine um, make sure it's in neutral it should be as easy as that just the two bolts there so we'll take those two bolts out and then we'll take it out and once it's out we're going to put it on a suitable sort of clamp we've got this workbench here which we can clamp the, the skeg to so we've lifted the engine up a little bit and we've got it set so we can get these two bolts now the socket i'm using is a 3 8 um, maybe beneficial to remove the prop here, which is just this split pin here. Just pull that in, pull it out, and the prop will come off. And give you a bit extra clearance to this forward bolt here. But I think we've put, we've got quite enough clearance there with it still in in that sort of half cock position there. So I'll whiz them two out, and then we'll see what happens after that. Okay, so I just moved it up a little bit more. I've taken both bolts out. There's one there. One there, that's them there, both the same size. And now we're clear to just pull the gearbox out, lay it down there, the drive shaft, the water pump there, the gear selector, and inside we've got the water pickup tube which slots into there. So we'll put this on the stand now and we'll tear the water pump down and see the condition inside. So there we have it, the gearbox is in the bench. I've just put some blocks in just to secure it. And we've swapped over to the next size, which is a 5 16th for the three bolts that hold the top cover on. So I'll whiz them out and then we'll slide the cover off and we'll be able to see the impeller. This is just a simple, just start each one off. tiny pump so the bolts aren't torqued massively likewise they don't need to be tightened to the death when you reinstall these there's only three of them they're only small so that's it ready to come off now it should just be a case depending on that's it we'll just lift the whole thing off it looks like the impellers coming off with the with the top which is what normally happens but we'll get it all off and then we'll have a look at it so I've taken the top cover off and I've just started the impeller and let's see if we can get it off one handed here and all the way off there we go that's the impeller just a triple blade looks to be in quite good condition and that's held captive on the drive shaft via that keyway um, it's like a plastic insert we'll also be changing this bottom wear plate because that's what the impeller runs on in the cover we also have a the top cover wear plate, that's in good condition. There's no there's no major sort of wear or grooves forming in that. So we'll reuse that. The bottom one, likewise, it's it looks pretty pretty good, but I've got a new one, so we'll just change that and the impeller. And then it's a case of reinstalling it all. So I've got the impeller off like you saw there. We'll just try and take this wear plate off. Hopefully it'll come off. One piece there, yep, straight up. Remember to keep the orientation, just drop the cam on the floor there and pick that back up. It's a good idea as well, just to just to inspect the cam that it's not um starting to get like a profile cut into it because sometimes the, the impellers they can sort of almost jump and ride over the cam, which this one's looking alright. Normally you get a new one in the kit, but let's like say this is an aftermarket aftermarket part, so we don't get one in this kit. 
when you take it off always sort of put it down in the position it came off in just so when you put it back in you know the exact orientation you don't want to put it in the wrong way around this one's pretty self-explanatory because it's only got three holes but some of them are sort of square and they'll go in in any direction on the top here we're just checking there's no gasket on there and there's no gasket underneath so i don't no oh, there is a gasket on there but it's it's in good condition there so just taking a, a good look everything looks to be in the right, the right place so we'll drop this new plate on just like that like i say this isn't like a, a massively in-depth how-to video of you know measuring things and this and that this is literally just a purely how to change the impeller on the johnson 4 horsepower two-stroke engine like you'll say i think the one with the reverse is slightly different i'm not sure what's different with it but the parts are different online so this is purely for the one that has neutral and forward and now we have the impeller to put in so fairly easy we just start putting the impeller down we get to this point here where the keyway goes we can just put the keyway in the path and push the impeller over the top of the keyway now, it's a little bit fiddly but it'll go on and then it just sits flush so there we go I've just put the the wear plate on the impeller with the keyway it's all lined up and meshed now it's just a case of reinstalling the top cover and the three bolts that go with it just take the top cover there and we just press it straight over the top something that's given the the drive shaft a bit of a turn and then we can put each bolt in and turn so there's only three of them and it's as easy as that go back to our ratchet which is a 516 we can just whisk these down one at a time okay. Let's say it's a plastic house and these bolts are small, you don't have to go mad. And just finish off each one with a just to feel how tight they are. And that's fine. It's now a case of just putting it back in, lining up the gear selector rod here, and there's a water pickup tube which goes into the pickup there. Now I find on this engine it's it's easier said than done putting it back in, but it will go in. you just got to make sure that your gear selector's lined up, the pickup, water pickup tube, which is just in there, and the drive shaft line up with the power head, and it'll all go in there. You've got, obviously, the two bolts that go in there, and it's a fairly straightforward job. One thing I forgot to add, as far as I'm aware, it's irrelevant, the position of the gear selector. And unlike other outboards, there's nothing to disconnect at the top or sort of midsection. So I have an inspection port here that you have to open and you sort of split the rod in half. And when you put it back in, you've got to reconnect it. This one is because it's on a spring inside the gearbox and it's neutral and forward only. There's nothing to worry about. Okay, so after some wiggling, I managed to get it in. Obviously, make sure once it's in that the water pickup tube is in. You have to sort of just crack it back a little bit because the water pickup tube can, because it's sort of like free hanging, you can miss the opening and the water pump will just pump water into this case and you won't get water to the power head. So just make sure that's in and then you can put the two bolts, one there and one there, back in. So we'll put the prop back on and we've got to put some gear oil in as well and then it's good for a test run and we can test whether water comes out. It comes out that little pee hole, which is just there. Likewise, for the reinstallation of the prop, it's very straightforward. Just got this shear pin there that goes through that hole. And then on the inside, you can see there's a plastic cutout. And that just slips straight over there. And it should, with some wiggling, engage. And then through there, we can put this, the pin. And for now, I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna put the old one back through, but we'll get a new one for it and then we'll Test to make sure the gearing works. So just a quick test to make sure it's working the gearing. Got the engine on the stand there. We'll just pull the prop 
or so. You can see that it's not turning. Click it into gear. That's turning. So you know the props work. And we go back to neutral. Sometimes these ones just take a little bit, there you go, to come out of gear. Because it is spring loaded. And obviously we haven't got the weight of the water or resistance or anything. And normally the drive shafts turn all the time at a higher speed than I'm pulling it, so quite happy with that, that it's working. And it's just a case of a test run once the gearbox oil's in. So there we go, I've just fired it up there. New impeller. Squirting water really well there. As you can see, it's in neutral. And that's drive. Back into neutral. So obviously we'll fix the gearbox issue as well. Not seeing massive amounts of oil on there. So I'm confident there's no oil leak on the, on the seals. So I'll see that down the top. It's running quite nicely. But I'm quite happy with that. So we'll just stop the engine there. I suppose that concludes the video of how to change the water pump on a Johnson 4 horsepower 2 stroke. Obviously, we had a bit of a sidetrack there, we had to take the gearbox apart, but nothing we can't manage, and hopefully. If you have the same problem, you do that inadvertently, then you can put it back together as well. So I hope you've enjoyed that. If you give a, a like and a subscribe if you haven't already, it would be much appreciated. And stay tuned for the next one.